Hi everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to look at the use of motion blur. Uh, how we can use that to improve, in more specifically, sports pictures. Um, any kind of motor racing. It's always great when you can have that great panned look. Um, if you're talented enough to be able to pan and use slower shutter speeds, it can be really, really effective. Unfortunately, most of us are not that adept at it, so our panning skills just about work out to keep something in focus. Um, to try and drop the shutter speed to get that panned effect to the background is very, very difficult. But we can do it in post edit, and that's what we're going to look at today. So I'm going to go into my past channel here because I do have a a cutout that I made earlier on ready, just to save us a little bit of time. It's a bit crude; it isn't the greatest cutout, so you have to excuse me. But it uh, suits the purpose of the tutorial. So now I've got that selection active. I'm going to Control J to put it onto a new layer. I'm going to turn that layer off. Now I'm going to use the Control key and select that layer again, just to make the selection active again, and go back down to the background layer. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, Content Aware. Now this won't do a great job, um, but it doesn't have to be great because we are going to be adding that filter to this. Uh, to create that nice motion blur but what we need to do is is to have the colors in the same palette as the background uh, because the way the the filter works it elongates the pixels to give that illusion of motion so if you have any colors that are different to the surrounding areas when that filter is applied those colors get dragged out so if there's any kind of reds and whites and stuff left from the bike they got to get streaked out across the picture which obviously will make it look a little bit odd um, so I'm going to Control D to deselect now. I could say it's, it's done a reasonable job, but obviously around the edges and stuff, it hasn't done a a great job. So I'm just going to use the spot healing tool. Like I say, we're not looking for this to make a incredibly accurate repair. We're just looking to get the colours on a similar sort of palette as the surrounding areas. Um, we don't have any, any blatantly different colours or any really harsh edges to the colours that might look odd once the filter is applied. So I'm just going to run around the edge of this with a spot healing tool. I'm sorry I should have reduced the size of this file before I started. Um, but I forgot. So I'll just wait a few seconds for that to kick in and make those spot repairs around the outside. Now it's not too bad. Um, that's probably, to be honest, more than enough for the effect that we're looking for. So I'm just going to take out a couple of the odd areas that are really kind of stand out. I'm just going to swap over to the patch tool. I'm going to take that side that way. I'll make another selection take that one that way that one up there and I think that'll do us so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on the background convert to smart object we'll do this simply so we can go back and alter the filter should we need to and we're going to go to filter blur motion blur now that direction is about right, um, so we don't really need to change anything, but you can change the direction that the blur is running. Um, but I think at that kind of, around about minus 7, minus 8, something like that is about right. You can see what I mean about the colours being streaked out now. If we'd had any bits of red, those, those red pixels would have been spread out across the picture. It would have stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, it's usually the most common mistake people make when they're trying to do this is that... Um, they run the motion blur filter and then think they can just mask over the bike area. And it doesn't work because you've got pixels of that bike that have been spread around the surrounding areas and it just never works. So I'm quite happy with that, so we'll leave that at that. And we'll just turn our bike back on. So you see all of a sudden we've got a more dynamic background now and it looks more realistic. It looks as if it has been a, a really clever pan shot rather than done after the event. If you feel like there's still some edges there that don't look quite right, um, you can go to the bike, la bike layer, Control T to transform, and you could just grab, hold your shift button to constrain the portions, and just grab the corners and just 
drop them out ever so slightly um, and it will cover any slight lines that you think still may spoil the picture. So other things I would do to this picture is obviously the first thing I would probably go into this paintwork here and start repairing some of these scratches and chips in the in the paintwork um, a little bit of yellow and paint missing of his helmet and that kind of stuff and the other thing I would probably do is I would look at trying to get a bit of a reflection of this grass and the track in this side of the visor but only very faint um, <coughs> so what I'll do is I'll just very quickly show you how we do that and this is going to be quick so it's going to be quite crew so do take a lot more time with this than I'm about to so I'm going to make a selection that I want to create a reflection from and I'm going to press Control J and put that onto its own level and move it up to the top now I'm going to press Control T to take that selection and zoom in a little bit more here and I'm going to rotate this a bit and just make sure I'm covering the main area. I'm not going to be too particular with this um, and again it isn't a really strong reflection that we're looking for, we're just looking for some kind of a a hint of a reflection if you will. So I'm going to change the blending mode of that to soft light so you can see there's kind of, you can see the, the white line a bit of tarmac and a bit of the green. Now we'll probably play, with that, play about with that a little bit more in a minute but I'm just going to add a, a layer mask to there take a brush tool, make sure my colour is set to black. Um, this is a hard edge tool as well, so I'm just going to zoom in a bit more, and that brush a bit smaller. I'm going to make a select, I'm going to click to make a brush stroke there, come down to the bottom here, and I'm going to hold my shift key and press it again, it's going to do a full stroke along that line for me. So again, click once, move it to the next kind of arc in the uh, curvature of that helmet and then press the shift key again and the same at the top here now I'm going to drop the opacity of the brush now down to around about 28% something like that I'm just going to run over the edge of that a few times just to lessen the effect. If I alt click on the mask you'll see what I'm doing, I'm just feathering that effect a little bit on the corner there. I think that'll do is now I'll take the whole opacity of that layer and juice it down a little bit. Again it's only a slight detail that you can't really see that much of. I mean if I turn that on and off you see you can only just about see it. Um, but it's the little details that make a difference. Now I do have one that I've already worked on a little bit earlier on to do some of this healing and cloning and stuff on the bodywork and the helmet and things. Um, so I'll flick over to that and we can have a look at the finished article. So like I said, we've done a lot of the clone repair work on the helmet um, around the bottom here. Um, this paintwork particularly on the, the fenders around the front here. Um, all the paintwork chips and stuff have been repaired. There's quite a few oil patches that have been removed from these levers. It's not perfect, but um, it's better than what it started. This picture to this picture. Um, now there is quite a dramatic difference. Obviously the background is the main thing. Um, but as we flick back and forth, you can see the areas on here that were damaged on the paintwork have all been repaired and there's lots of repairs been done to the helmet uh, the visor has been darkened down and we've got that slight reflection of the the grass and the curb that's appearing in the visor so all these little details do add up and do make a difference um, so there you have it that's how to add motion blur to your pictures hope you find it useful the more often you do this the easier it gets the quicker it gets it doesn't become quite time consuming um, the other thing to bear in mind is when you're making your selections do have a look for the other videos because you can let's make a selection and save it as a path and that path will be saved within a JPEG file so whenever you come back into it you can always just click on that path 
and click the make selection button down there and you can do another selection also that selection doesn't quite fit on this file anymore because we extended the size of the bike just to cover any imperfections to the um, content aware fill but do go back and have a look at that video it will help you when you're making selections and also if you get a bit short of time you can make your selection a path save your file and then come back in and make it active again and continue to add to it so you don't have to do your selection all at once you can make it progressive over a period of time if you don't have time to sit down and do it all at once thanks for watching till the next time bye for now